Oh my giddy aunt, Harry and Meghan's Netflix doc series was the devil's own. Explain to me the justification of spending $100 million for this. Netflix will soon go bankrupt if this content is worth $100 million to them. There are better content on YouTube filmed and edited on a smartphone that has more depth and more execution than what we just saw. I don't blame Netflix really. I don't even blame the successes. I blame myself. I blame us for hyping this nonsense and expecting anything new and original. They have already done their worst with the Oprah's interview. There is nothing so far on this doc series, or let's just call it what it is, heavily edited reality show. Though there is nothing new in this first batch of their series, I felt like they were trying to lay a foundation for something more sinister. You know like those horror movies when you feel all safe and secured and suddenly something grabs you from within the darkness, drags you in and totally destroys you. So maybe the next batch will be where the mayhem actually happens. So maybe they are trying to lure us into a false sense of relief and when we are blissfully happy, they totally drop a doozy on us again and destroy us. Hmm, that would be very sinister, right? Ooh, the plot thickens. However, I think there are three main points this first part of the docuseries tried highlighting. Racism, the savagery of the British press and Princess Diana. The docuseries is filled with innuendos like the place where Meghan was talking about meeting William and Catherine for the first time. She sort of implied that the reception she received from them was cold. According to her, she was dressed in torn jeans, t-shirt and barefooted and she's a hugger but the same official protocol maintained in public is carried inside. Megan chose her words carefully. She practically called William and Catherine cold-hearted, unfeeling, emotionless suckers for protocol without saying it. She implied it and left the audience to infer whatever they want to infer. Speaking about the first time she met the Queen, she spoke about cutscene and following royal protocols which were strange to her. Yes, it should be strange to you. You are meeting royalty, you are meeting the Queen and that's not your, it's not up your street. So yeah, any ordinary person will find that meeting daunting and rightly so. But even an ordinary family have their own family protocol. Every family have rules and culture that governs their day-to-day -day lives. How much more the royal family? Prince Harry joked about how do you tell someone that you bow to your grandma. But your grandmother is a queen. Everybody bows to her. He conveniently leaves out what happened after bowing to his grandma. Is it still maintaining official distance or can you then relate with her as a grandson would? We've seen videos of both of them so we know Harry has a healthy and warm relationship with, with his grandma. So actually making it sound as if it's very detached and cold is um, seriously concerning. On the heavy handedness on racism, I guess they were trying to draw a parallel between Meghan's experience with the royal family and other racist events encountered by black people in the UK. I was especially vexed that the Lawrence's issue was dragged into this drama. Stephen Lawrence was racially murdered in 1993 at a bus stop by a group of white boys. I can't see the link between his experience and Megan's. He was a boy experiencing the reality of what being black means in London in 1993, while Megan's life of opulence and entitlement bear no similarities. H and M, as they fondly called themselves throughout the series, hmm, what does H and M remind me of? Oh, the clutch shop! Okay, <laughs> H and M played up the press angle. If anyone should get offended by this first series, it should be the British press. 
They were depicted as vampire leeches who hounded the royal family unfairly and I agree that they are blood sucking demons only interested in pictures and making money from the royals. But these blood suckers have a contractual agreement in place with the royals. Without the British press, the royals won't have the level of exposure they have. They have a trade by butter kind of relationship with some press houses in a rotor system with the palace. Meghan isn't the only royal that was hounded. Catherine was. Can you remember when she was called Waity Katie? She was followed everywhere. Her life was turned upside down. Even Camilla was okay. Queen Consort Camilla was also called out. She was called all kinds of names. She was hounded. It was brutal. Unfortunately, Princess Diana was hounded to her death. But according to Harry, none of it had the race element to it. So, Diana's life was valueless because she wasn't a black woman? They are truly overplaying the race card. And finally we have it. The similarities between Meghan and Diana they have been trying to establish by shoving Meghan into similar outfits as Diana have been made. According to Harry, Meghan embodies his mother, Diana the Princess of Wales, but I beg to disagree. With no love from her husband, no support, a mistress that wasn't hidden, infidelity that was practically shoved down her throat, and a husband that barely tolerated her. Not only did she stay and take it and tolerated everything she gathered the heart betrayer pain and turned it into something compassionate which she gave back to her children her family her friends and the entire world no one has anything negative to say about diana nobody i mean seeing her hearing about her seeing the work she did is i'm short of words I don't know how they can compare Megan with Diana. If Diana had a drop of the love, the loyalty, the affection, the compassion Harry has shown Megan, can you imagine what she would have accomplished? Can you imagine what she would have done? That is the amazement of Diana because with nothing, she won over the whole world. Without King Charles, Diana remains the queen and the princess of heart that she is. But without Harry, Meghan is nothing royal. She is just Meghan, the cable TV actress. From everything we've seen and heard so far about Princess Diana, she understood her role. She understood her position. Keeping her family together must have meant everything to her if she was willing to stay with a man that disrespected her at every turn. If not for the interview she gave and only did because she was lied to that her life was in danger, the queen herself, Diana our princess, would still be with us today and won't have said anything negative about her family. Princess Diana is nothing like Meghan and to say otherwise is an insult to everything she stood for.